Hi everybody, happy Thursday. Today we're going to be learning about the history of the atom. Uh, so yeah, let's dive into it. We're basically going to be talking about how the atom has changed over time and why we're even bothering to talk about the history of the atom. Why, why not just talk about the atom? Why not talk about just the present day model of it? Let's dive into it. All right, so the atom, the, the concept of the atom actually came about about 2,200 or so years ago. Um, and we're actually going to do like a little mini experiment here. We're going to do exactly what they did all those millennia ago. So they used bread when they did it. Democrates used bread when he, he did this. But we're going to use a piece of paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip this piece of paper in half like so. Bam. Okay. And I'm going to rip that half and half again. Now I've got a quarter. And I'm just going to keep ripping it in half. Now it's an eighth, a sixteenth, a thirty-second. It's going to start to get smaller and smaller. Um, eventually, I can use some scissors to start cutting it in half. There we go. Now it's like one in 128, and so on and so forth, right? Let's just say I had the world's best scissors, and I could just chop this thing up like almost an infinite number of times what would happen what would i eventually be left with yeah i'd be left with an atom okay what i've got on the tip of my finger that's like hexillions trillions of trillions of atoms just that little tiny speck of paper right that's how small atoms are but Democrates was like, hey, you know, if we do this enough, eventually we're going to have to come down to something that can't be split in half anymore. Because if it was big enough to be split in half, well, then I would just have something smaller. And if I split that in half, I'd just have something even smaller. But eventually I would have something that is so small you can no longer cut it in half. And that is the atom, atomos, that which is indivisible. And that's where the idea of the atom came along. So... One thing that is happening in our society is a technological revolution, right? Since about the 17th century with the uh, automization of industrial coal plants and things like that, humanity has access to more energy and more learning. But up until that point, not a whole lot of technology really happened. So it wasn't actually until about the 1800s, until 1808, where a guy named John Dalton came along and proposed a new version of the model. See, Dalton actually used experiments. He actually used data to prove the existence of an atom. And he proposed a couple of different things. So he proposed that all atoms look like little teeny tiny spheres. And that's what a lot of people think the atom looks like. Um, and these little teeny tiny spheres, right, there's different kinds of spheres. Some of them are a little bit bigger, some of them are a little bit smaller because they're all different elements. That's one of our vocab words from last week, right? We, and we've seen the periodic table of elements. We know about that. We know there's hundreds of different types of elements because all of those elements are made up of atoms, right? An atom is just kind of like a descriptor that we use to describe something really, really small. And that's what Dalton said. So what do you think? Are atoms the same thing as elements? Technically, all elements are atoms, right? If you've got this, this I have a tungsten redding wing, uh, elemental symbol W. Um, this tungsten element ring is made of tungsten atoms, right? The oxygen in the air that we're breathing is made of oxygen atoms. Cool. Okay. So, again, it takes a while for technology to start picking up, but what's starting to happen? It took about, you know, 2,200 years or so between Democ Democrates and Dalton to develop their model, 400 BC, 400 years before Christ, to 1800s, 1800 years after Jesus. Only a hundred years now for the Thompson model to be developed. 
So Thompson came up with this idea that the atom actually has charges in it. See, the atom itself, it's mostly a positively charged thing, but within it, there are these negatively charged particles called electrons. And he was right, and he used the scientific method to pr prove it. Um, and these electrons, he, he, kinda, he called it the plum pudding model or the blueberry muffin model. These electrons are like little tiny blueberries in a blueberry muffin, if you will. The, the muffin itself, it's positive, but those blueberries are negative. That's kind of how Thompson envisioned his model. So what did Thompson add to the model? Dalton said that the model was just a sphere. What did Thompson add to this model? Thompson added charges, negatively charged electrons in a positively charged putty, putty thing. Okay. All right, now only 14 years for something new to happen. Long came Rutherford. A lot of people like to call this the Jimmy Neutron model, because um, this is like, or the Big Bang Theory model, because they, they do the little Big Bang Theory thing with this model. Um, Rutherford made a lot of cool developments to the model. He showed that the model, that the atom is actually mostly empty space. If you imagine that the nucleus of an atom is a marble, the closest electron is like an entire football field away. That's how much space there is between the nucleus of the atom and the electron. And Rutherford proved that. And he also showed us that these electrons move around the positively charged nucleus in these rings called orbitals. Okay. So, was there a nucleus in the Thomson model? What did Rutherford add to the model of the atom? Yeah, he added a nucleus. Along comes a guy named Bohr. Again, only two years later. All right. So Bohr basically said, hey, guys, there's not just positively charged protons in the nucleus. There's also these things called neutrons. And Rutherford, you were kind of right. There are electrons in these things called orbitals. But orbitals aren't just arranged in random rings. They're actually arranged in these things called energy levels. And you're going to hear me talk about that a lot in our upcoming units. So what did Bohr develop? What did he bring to this table? Two things. Neutrons and energy levels. These rings are organized in levels. Like this is the first level, this is the second level, the third level, and so on and so forth. You can imagine that as we get more and more rings with bigger and bigger atoms, we have more energy levels. Then we get to something called the quantum model. And I'm actually going to spend a little bit more time talking about the quantum model this year than I usually do, just because it's becoming more and more important as we move into a technological civilization and an atomic era. Um, the modern model is basically what we today think the atom looks like. So, and, and I'll talk more about this on Wednesday, because it, it's, and probably later in the week as well, because it's really interesting the main premise of the quantum model or the modern model is that while there is a positively charged nucleus with neutrons in the center of the atom, the electrons are kind of, while they're in energy levels, Bohr was right, they're in energy levels, we don't really know where those energy levels are. They're more of a concept rather than an actual physical line that the electrons are whirling around. In truth, the electrons are kind of in a sort of cloud shape, and we can never really know where the electrons are in that cloud because they're moving so fast, because they have spin, because they have energy. Um, and it's, it's kind of like a little black box. We don't really know what's inside it. And that's kind of what the 21st century has been all about, is cracking the atom, understanding what's inside the box, basically the, the the game plan that people are doing nowadays is we're using these things called particle accelerators to take the atom, to take the black box, and break it. Because <laughs> that's literally the only way we know what's, for sure what's inside of it. And we'll talk a little bit more about particle accelerators later on. Okay, cool. This is a fairly complicated concept. What I want you to understand 
is that we don't know where the electrons are. We have these things called energy levels, but the fact of the matter remains, these energy levels are complicated. It's the basic premise. Stay tuned, folks, for more videos. I'll be posting more for later. Take care. Bye now.